Uh, welcome to why you should just use Cypress for React component testing. Um, all of the images used in this were created using Midjourney. Um, Midjourney is an AI image generator. Um, I asked for a jester sitting in front of a cypress tree. That is not a cypress tree, and that apparently is a jester with three fingers. This was, this was before version five when they got the good, oh man, that's feedback. Before they got the good fingers. Okay, my name is Tyler Graff. I'm a web developer at uh, FamilySearch.org. There's my Twitter handle and my hobbies. If you have any of those same interests, you can hit me up. Um, the purpose of this talk <clears throat> is to give you an intro to Cypress component testing. We're gonna compare it to Jest. I'm gonna have lots of demos. And the assumption that I'm making as I'm talking is uh, that you already know React, you have already used Jest, and um, and uh, so even if you haven't used those, that's okay. Uh, you'll still get something out of this, but that's just where I'm coming from. So Cypress, many of you may have heard of Cypress. Cypress is a testing framework. It first came out with end-to-end uh, -end testing. It's meant to, it's in, in browser testing. Um, so I'll show you what end-to-end -end is, and then recently they just came out with the idea of component testing. So end-to-end, -end, you call cy.visit in your test, you pass it a URL, and then it visits the page, and then you uh, assert that things are on the page, you click on things, assert things. Um, what this infers is that www.familysearch.org exists, right? So you have running code on a server that hits back-end servers that also has your databases. So it's it's end-to-end, -end, right? That's that's the idea of end-to-end, -end, is that the entire environment is set up. Um, whereas with component testing, it's, it's not like that. You import your component here, you call cy.mount, you pass it JSX, and then it renders your component in the browser, and you assert things. You can click on things just like you were doing in the other. Um, so Jest versus Cypress, let's be honest, Jest has some dragons, namely uh, act errors. I still don't know how to get past these a lot of the time, and I'm still trying to figure them out. Uh, Cypress has dragons too. It's just like any other technology, it, there are trade-offs, right? Always trade-offs. Um, I'm just saying that I choose uh, Cypress. So, uh, assuming you've used Jest, Jest has the module mocking. The mock mocking at the module level was just very, very powerful. <clears throat> Cypress doesn't have that. The only lever you have to pull is at the network. Um, debugging in, Cy in Cypress is in browser, so it's excellent. Uh, and then the display is fully rendered, whereas in, in Jest, it's, uh, you get maybe DOM output and you just, uh, in no, no debugger, which is suboptimal. Uh, let's head over to some demos. So uh, I created this page. This has a, a list of all of the my latest mid-journey um, image generations. And then it also has the prompt for each of these below it. And if you click on any of these, <clears throat> where'd they go? If you click on any of these, uh, it shows it in an overlay. It's a little bit bigger with the, the prompt there as well. So this is the page or the component that we're gonna be testing. And then I'm also fetching this data from a local server here. So if we head over to the code, oh no, I'm sorry about this. I haven't been practicing, don't worry about it. Okay, so if we head over to the code, I've got this mid-journey JS file. Um, and next to it, I have the test JS, that's my uh, my Jest test I've already written. We'll look at that in just a minute. But I've also added this midjourney.cy.js. So this uh, midjourney looks for .spec or .cy by default. Um, you can configure that in the, the configurations. But um, And then the way that I'm going to run, I guess I don't need that anymore. The way I'm gonna run uh, this is a run Cypress. Sorry, did I say midjourney? I meant Cypress. Uh, Cypress open. And then I'll just pass in, I'll just not do that. That opens up an Electron app. And it says, do you wanna do end-to-end -end testing or component? I'm gonna do component testing, because I'm configured for that. And then it shows me a list of the browsers I have installed that uh, work with 
Cyprus. And notice that Safari is not on the list. Um, I think there's preliminary support for it, but um, I'll use Electron. Okay, so it gives me a list of all of the files that it found in my app uh, that it can that are tests. So I'm going to click on this Mid Journey one here. There is nothing there because I haven't written any tests yet. So let's head back over to midjourney.cy. Let's import <coughs> midjourney from midjourney.slash midjourney. And then you can do describes if you want, but I'm just going to do an it should render. And then you call cy.mount and then pass in your JSX. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm getting my component render over here on the right. Um, I'm getting an error, we'll deal with that in just a minute. But let's go ahead and assert that mid-journey images is showing. So down below this, I'll call cy.contains and contains should be visible. Yep, so the assertion is correct there, it's there. And now let's deal with this error. So it's trying to make a data call to get all of the, the list, right? So let's show you what that looks like. I'm gonna copy this URL that it's failing on. And <clears throat> I'm gonna do it before each, because I'm gonna have this in a couple different tests. Oh. Um, so I'm gonna call cy.intercept pass the URL, and then this is what I want the response to be. So you can look at the docs, but there's like status code. I want to respond with a certain body. And so what I usually do is I go out to, the this is the real app, and I'll just get this response object, and then I go back and put it inside of a fixtures directory. Fixtures slash, I'm gonna call this mentions, because uh, Midjourney uses Discord, and so I just searched for all of my mentions. Why is that not saving? There we go. Um, I just searched for all of my mentions, and then the object is kind of hairy, but I just parsed through it. So now I go back to midjourney.cy.js, and I'll import that body. So mentions body from dot dot slash fixtures mentions. And then I'm going to say that um, I want to respond with that. So what I'm saying is, hey, uh, browser, anytime you see this, um, this URL, a get on this URL, respond with this JSON that I just put in there, right? Let's see if that works. Yep, so I've got my list there. And then uh, it's kind of small. It defaults to 500 by 500. So let's go ahead and change that cy.viewport. You can pass in a height and width. Um, I'm just going to do one of their presets, MacBook 16, since that's what I'm on. Yeah, so we get the aspect ratio and the zoom level of what that is. If I resize this, um, it, it keeps the same aspect ratio. Yeah. Um, and another thing that's kind of interesting is, uh, I'll make this a little bit bigger here. But if I look at the network tab and I refresh here, um, the browser doesn't really know any different. It just lo it looks like it made a regular fetch to this URL. And if you had real data, like if, if you wanted to hit real data, you could. Like I would advise against it and actually mock your data. But uh, according to the browser, it's just, it's just getting that data back. Um, that's all just running in the browser. All right, so let's say I want to uh, make sure that this data call was made. So I can set up an alias for this, dot as, and I can call it whatever I want, data call. And then to get at that later, I call cy.get, at sign, and then that's how you get at the, the alias. Um, should have been called. So according to the docs, this is supposed to work. It never has for me, and I'm not exactly sure why. So if, here's a dragon I found. If anybody else knows that I'm doing wrong, that's okay. Or you can let me know. But I usually just do data call to all, and then should have length of one. And this this is a lot like just mock, where you have like an array of all the times that the function was called or whatever. Let's see if that works. Yep. So it was called. 
Um, so also notice that this is fully interactive. Like it's just rendering my component in the browser so I can interact with this and like test it out, right? I can click on this stuff. So it's the same as if it were, I mean it is rendered in a browser, right? It's the same as if it were rendered in my app. Um, the next thing I wanna do is pass in a prop. This component takes an item count prop and we'll just say I wanna only show five. Yep, so it shows five there, and let's assert that. So cy.get, and you can just pass in CSS selectors here. So I'm just passing in button, and it will return all of the buttons it can find. If you want to just get the first one, you can call first. You can look at the docs for that kind of stuff. But I want to make sure that there are five here. So should have length of five. Yep, there we go. All right. I am now going to create another test. And this one we're gonna click on some stuff. So this one should render and show overlay on click. And let's remove all these assertions. Okay, and I'm actually gonna do a, it dot only so it only shows this one. Did I mess something up? Okay, so here's my second test. It's rendering all of these. I want to click on this and make sure that the overlay shows. So um, I'm just gonna use the dev tools to get at these. These are just a bunch of buttons. And this one has a data test ID of midjourney card four. I added that in my component. So it's just another way of getting at it, right? So cy.get. And then again, these are just CSS selectors, so data dash test ID equals this, right? That's one way to do it. The other way that I'm gonna show you is uh, using Cypress testing library from Kent C. Dodds. Um, I've got that installed, find by test ID, and it's got a bunch of these, which you might be familiar with. And then we're gonna click on that. Oh, click, see if that works. Yep, so it clicked on the right one. Um, just not, notice how easy that is though, like just dot click on that, it's pretty cool. Um, and then I want to assert that this right here, a demolition, is within this overlay. So let's duplicate this. And I know that my overlay has this data test ID on it. And then I say contains should be visible. So uh, notice that it's rendered on the right, and then all the steps for my, my tests are on the left. So I can hover over any of these, and it shows me like a snapshot of where it was in that time, right? So mount, it didn't do anything yet. Um, when I found this data test ID, see how it's, it's highlighting it up there in the middle? And then here's the click, I'm hovering over the click, it shows you the before and the after, so that's kind of cool. And it, it, there's a little dot there, I don't know if you can see it. The red dot, that's, that's where it clicked. So you can kind of adjust that if you need to. Um, but you get, you get so much information from seeing it rendered. There's been several times where I've been converting my Jest test over to Cypress, and I'm thinking that I'm passing in the correct props to render it the way I wanted to render it. And then I move it over to Cypress so as I'm converting, and I was not passing in the right props. It, like I see it rendered, and it's, it's like, oh, nope, that's wrong, and I can see where it's wrong because I wasn't passing in this certain prop. Um, that's happened several times. Um, if you aren't rendering a component, um, you can do that as well. So right down here, I have this util.js. I'm not actually using it, but it exports an add and subtract function. So we can test this in util.cy.js. I just import that function and then I just call it. And here I'm using expect. Um, you just call the function and you expect it to equal whatever, right? There's nothing rendered in this. Let's go back over here. So there's nothing rendered, but it is running in the browser, which is the native place where it's going to be running, and I have my tests over here. If you have more than one test, um, it just shows the test description, and if you click on any of these, you can see what the actual steps of the test are, which each of these only have one step. Okay. So I wanted to break something real quick. So I mentioned that we had um, 
I fetched that mentions uh, data, which is kind of messy, and I have to massage it a little bit here. Uh, I'm just introducing a bug here. Like, let's say I didn't know what this object was going to look like. I thought it was an object, but it's an, actually an array. So let's head back over to midjourney.cy. I think, yeah, let me run both tests. So it's going to fail because it's not working correctly. There's this bug. Um, but notice how it like points right where I'm supposed to go to fix that, right? Um, and maybe sometimes it does that, sometimes it doesn't. Maybe, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But I'm going to go back over here and set a debugger. And it just stops in the debugger. I have in-browser debugging. So I hover over this. Oh, it's an array, not an object. So then I go fix it, right? There, there's been so many times where I, I want to do that in Jest, and it, it's just cumbersome. It's, it's, it's harder to do. You can set it up in debug mode. It's just a lot harder to do. So let me run over to uh, Jest. And I've got that same bug there. Um, just notice this wall of text. Like, the only, like, formatting for the terminal is text and color. So, like, that, that's all you get. I guess you can kind of do ASCII art and stuff. But, like, the browser is so much richer, and you can get so much more information from it. So, cannot read property of undefined and replace. I, I, I don't actually know where that is. If I scroll down, I think, if I scroll down quite a ways. Not that one. No. There's a place where it does show. And I mean, I can do a console.log there and, and, and log it out. And that, that's definitely viable. But there's been many times where I, I need to be able to look at several different things uh, at that point or like step through the code, right? Um, just checking over my notes. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show is. Um, Cypress has a dashboard, so this is a paid service. They do have an op or they're not they, but there is an open source uh, version of this that we use at Family Search um, called Sorry Cypress. But it shows you like all of your last runs, all of your latest runs. Um, so this one is is a premium feature. But if I click on, let's see, go to the overview. These are my la latest runs. It shows like how long they took and that kind of stuff. And then if I go into any of these. Um, I can click on this test and watch the video. So if it failed, oh, yep, I don't have the internet right here. But if it, <laughs> if it failed, I can go watch the video and, and see if I can figure out what went wrong. Um, so in summary, I never want to write another Jest test because of all the awesome features and the developer experience of writing Cypress tests. Thank you.